Hey, this is Brock Lemires, and we're continuing our study of embedded systems design. In this video, we're going to look at a very important part of interrupts, which is the interrupt vector. Okay, so when you do an interrupt, or when you design interrupts, you are going to have a peripheral or reset or something external to the CPU that is going to raise a flag and say, I need to have some action be taken, okay? And you are going to write an interrupt service routine. And an interrupt service routine is very similar to a subroutine, except for the way that they are called and the way that you return from them. And so what you do <clears throat> is you mark the beginning address of the interrupt service, service routine with an address label, just like you do uh, with, the, with a subroutine, okay? But what's different about the interrupt service routine address label is that you don't jump to it from your main program. Because remember, your main program doesn't even know when this interrupt service routine will be uh, called because it's going to be triggered by an external peripheral or some other thing outside of the CPU, which is gonna raise a flag and interrupt the main program execution. So the main program doesn't actually have access to where this interrupt or this starting address for the routine is going to be. So in order to, to automatically store the starting address, we use this concept of an interrupt vector. And a vector, is a location in program memory, and it's actually always at the very end of program memory. <clears throat> and what it has is dedicated locations of where you put the interrupt service routine address <clears throat> for each peripheral, okay? And so <clears throat> this is really an important concept because there's only a certain number of what we call vectors that exist in an MCU. And what happens is that they are designed, they're basically assigned to the peripherals by the designers of the MCU. So you have to actually go out and look in the data sheet and figure out which one, which, which peripherals have a vector, which ones share a vector, what are the addresses for the vector. Uh, <clears throat> but you can think of the vector as it, it's an address pointer. So it's a hard-coded address that sits in, in this vector space of non-volatile memory, and it's going to be initialized by you when you download to an address that is, corresponds to the starting address of the interrupt service routine. And <clears throat> this is interesting because the vector address never changes. That is hard-coded, okay? So it, you, are, you get the table in the data sheet. But what does change is the starting address of the interrupt service routine because as you develop and you change your main program and add and, and subtract instructions, the, the address is gonna move around, but it always goes in the same hard-coded address in program memory. And once again, it's really important, this is hard-coded. Okay, so if you look at kind of program memory, what you're gonna see, and this is, this is common for all microcontrollers, actually ever even computer, but program memory is sitting here, and then at the very, very end, the last addresses, you have this thing called the interrupt vector table. And it is going to have these vectors that go from, you know, however many are in your MCU. This, um, this example has zero to 63, just for, as an example. But they are gonna basically fill up the last addresses in the, the non-volatile program memory, okay? And so this is an example of what it might look like. You have program memory up here, you're writing your program, you're writing your, your subroutines, your interrupt service routines. But way down here, these are these hard-coded addresses which are each associated with a specific interrupt. Okay, so let's take a look at how this <clears throat> might work. Okay, so let's take an example program. This, do not type this into your <laughs> into Code Composer. This does not work. This is only an example to show you how, how this kind of looks when you think about uh, what, what the binaries look like in memory. Okay, so we have a couple instructions, reset. Uh, there's this reset label and it moved, this is the, it initializes the stack pointer. <clears throat> the reset label just happens to be a label that's the first uh, address of our instruction or of our program. Then it's got another instruction. And then down here, you've got your main loop and we're gonna use a no op and then just jump main. And so this is the main program loop and it runs forever. And then let's just pretend we have two interrupt service routines that sit here, ISR1 and ISR2. We don't even know what this RETI is yet. And these are the op codes and operands that occupy program memory. And you think about it, if you look in here and you look at the binaries, uh, these are the op codes and operands for these instructions one by one. And you can see down here, this is where the, the main, the op code for no op and the jump main is. 
And then down here, these are these are instructions that are associated with the interrupt service routine one, and these are instructions that are associated with inter interrupt service routine two. But imp more importantly, is these addresses need to go somewhere. So let's take a look at the first one, which is going to be reset. Reset, whenever you reset a computer, what happens is that it has to go out and get the starting address of the program. Okay, so in our, our MSP, or MSP 430, <clears throat> the starting address of our program memory is 8,000. So have you ever wondered how it knows to set the program counter there? Well, it turns out that your first highest priority uh, interrupt is the reset vector, okay, or the reset interrupt. And what it does is when it triggers, it goes down to this hard-coded address, this vector, and it retrieves the value that you stored in there, <clears throat> and it puts it into program counter. And so you go, oh, well, that's kind of interesting. So somebody had to initialize 8,000 into this interrupt vector table for me. And it turns out that it is done for you automatically. That's why we have this reset label as the, at the first instruction of the main.asm that Code Composer gives us. Even though if you look at it, it says reset, but then the instruction is initializing the stack pointer. That has nothing to do with each other. But it just is here because it is the first instruction to execute when you come out of reset. Now, how do you get that address into the vector? Well, you do it with directives. So down here in the interrupt vector section, and this is actually the first one for reset is actually in your main.asm that Code Composer gives you. What you do is you use these directives .sect and .short. We know how to use .short. .short means that you're gonna put a value into <clears throat> a location. Well, we've always been putting stuff into like .text or .data, but this time we're gonna put it into dot reset and now you go what in the world is dot reset i've i've seen dot sec maybe i don't know if i've really used that one before you know i've used dot data to go into a new section of memory but this one is actually dot sec and what that is is that is a location in the linker file okay so this is in all the the project files for code composer automatically generated when you told it what mcu you were using and that is going to tell the assembler that you need to go to address FFFE and you need to insert the value for reset. So that's how that 8,000 got put in there. And this is done automatically for you. That reset label is done automatically for you. Okay, now let's look at a, the, a, no, another one and pretend that we're doing this one. Let's just pretend that ISR, ISR1 is associated with some peripheral. It, is, it has a vector in, in the vector table, <clears throat> okay? And for this one, let's say that it's vector 22. And so we are gonna have vector 22 is gonna hold the starting address associated with its service routine, which is going to be ISR1. ISR1 was just a normal, you put a label and you write the code, <clears throat> but more importantly, that's the code we want to execute when this vector 22 executes. So how do we get its starting address in there? Well, it, we use the dot sect and the dot short again, but this time, the address label is our interrupt service routine <clears throat> one label. And so that's how we use the dot short ISR one. That's what puts this 8,000 E into this location. Then you go, where did this dot in 22 come from? Yet again, this comes from the linker and the project files that are automatically created. So you have to actually go in and look these up and know which interrupts are available, what is their section in program memory at the end of program memory, and what's their name so that you know what to put after dot .sec. Let's look at the final one. I think we're getting the hang of this. Let's say we had a vector 25. I don't know what it is, timer or peripheral or whatever, a port. <clears throat> and we want that to execute this interrupt service routine too. And so what we have is we write it and then that, that ISR2 label is going to have some address. In this situation, it's 8012. We need to put that into the vector table corresponding to vector 25. So again, we use dot sect and dot short to put the label into dot int 25, which again came from the linker file, okay? So, so this, is, this is kind of an interesting concept, but just think of the vector table as a, a hard-coded set of addresses each assigned to a particular interrupt, and each of them needs to be initialized with the starting address of the routine that you're gonna execute when that particular interrupt or peripheral raises a flag.
Okay. MSP430. The MSP430 actually supports up to 64 separate interrupt vectors, and they exist in the range of FF80 down to FFFF. They are all 16-bit addresses, and they they just look like that. That's what they look like, vector 0, vector 1. Now, notice that I did not say vector 0, vector 1 is assigned to timer 0, timer B1, B whatever. That's because, remember, the MSP430 is the general architecture. It's only when you get to the specific MCU that we, they assign these vector locations to the actual peripherals, okay? And also remember, not every vector address is supported in every MCU. The smaller the MCU, maybe you only have one interrupt, maybe you only have 10 interrupts, okay? So that is the, the concept of an interrupt interrupt vector. Okay, so as always, remember to support my channel by subscribing, and I'll see you later.